been getting a lot of questions recently of people asking me where do I get the hydrogen from to run the hydrogen engines that you've all seen in some of the videos I've posted. Originally I used uh, electrolysis uh, to get the pure hydrogen gas that you've seen and then I've used chemical reactions to make pure hydrogen gas both of which you know they're doable but it's not great I mean electrolysis takes quite a bit of power to make the hydrogen um, and it takes a long time, especially if you're making it yourself. I mean, that's fine, especially if you're using solar panels or wind to make that electricity in the first place. I then use chemical reactions, uh, mixing different chemicals, which, you, which you'll see in the videos. Uh, that makes good pure hydrogen gas, but there's lots of contaminants in there, which can react with the metals inside the engine. And it's quite difficult to filter these out. I'm sure a brighter person than me could figure out how to do that. Uh, but it's also an exothermic reaction, so things get hot real quickly, especially when you're making the gas. What I've been doing recently though, is actually buying the hydrogen gas from a local gas supplier. And uh, it's, it's not cheap, it's expensive. Um, I tend to buy bottles which are 175 bar, um, which is a lot of pressure. It's something along the lines of 1,480 litres that I'm getting in a gas tank. And that gas tank looks just like this. It's not, uh, it's not too big, it's not too heavy, but uh, on a generator engine, it can last anywhere between two hours and four hours, depending on your load and what RPM you're running and operating the engine at. Um, but a, a, a gas tank like this, you know, you can just, you can drive up, order it, collect it, bring it back, and you've got guaranteed 99.9% .9 pure hydrogen gas, which is brilliant for running your hydrogen engines on. It's important to note that when running a hydrogen engine, it's, uh, it's important to change the oil regularly. Uh, the oil, especially during uh, startup and shutdown procedures, your oil can get contaminated with the burnt hydrogen, which of course is water, and that water will, will, will contaminate your, your oil inside the engine. So it's important to change the, the oil in your engine more regularly. It's also important to get an appropriate gas regulator for your gas bottle. Now I've used an actual hydrogen regulator, high pressure regulator, to use with my gas bottle. However, gas regulators tend to come with high pressure gauges. You will have a pressure gauge for the actual bottle and the pressure gauge of your output flow. Now the output flow on high pressure gauges go very, very high and we only need 3 to 6 psi to operate our hydrogen engines. Therefore, you need to swap out your uh, output gas regulator um, gauge to a low pressure gauge. Now I'm currently using a zero to 15 PSI regulator gauge, as you can see on here. I've also got a two flashback resistors. I have one on the actual regulator itself and one further down the line. That's also important for safety reasons. But it's important to note that you, do, you, you definitely need a low pressure gauge, just so you can you can set up that gas, tune it in just right for the RPM that you need, and the and the and the power that you're after. Obviously, my generator engines can operate on three psi of hydrogen gas. However, if I want uh, higher speeds, higher load, you know, higher RPMs, I'm gonna have to use about six psi. Um, it all depends on the engine. At the end of the day, I've got a two-stroke engine that operates on about three psi, and that's that's good enough for that. If I go up to four or five PSI, it starts redlining real quick on a two-stroke engine. But on a four-stroke engine, especially on the uh, Honda GX160 clone that I have, uh, I, I need three PSI for, or for idle operation and very small loads. And then I need about six PSI for full power. But of course, if I'm running six PSI all the time, uh, the gas tank will deplete real quickly. It's also important to mention that uh, you need good oil cooling for an engine. Um, as long as air cooling, and even if you can cool those intake ports and exhaust ports to, to stop pre-ignition in an engine, you want a bit of water cooling as well, being squirted into the engine as a fine mist. Awesome. Let's show some hydrogen engines in operation.